Kathleen Morris noticed some weight gain when she entered menopause, but she used intermittent fasting to drop 50 pounds. Thank you so much for being here. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell people who you are and what you do. Great. I will do that. Um, thank you first for this lovely interview. Um, I just, um, I guess I work full time as a telecommunications um, person um, dealing with cable, internet, home security, uh, phone. So I'm kind of on the phone all day long. I talk all day. <laughs> um, that's my full-time day job. Um, after work, I work on my writing business and I've been a published author since 2012. Um, I've got about 30 books on Amazon, uh, wow. suspense, suspense thrillers, uh, inspirational books, short stories, um, both fiction and nonfiction. Uh, I re my recent book actually that I've published in January is an intermittent fasting book. Um, it's called Hungry Old Lady, Intermittent Fasting for Menopause. <laughs> it's kind of a weird, a weird title, I know, but um, kind of a spoof on being hungry, you know, and old. I mean, I hope I don't look as old as the picture on the book, <laughs> but it, I just thought it was funny. Anyway, so um, that's uh, basically what I split my time with, my full-time job and my, my business. Um, now with my business, I've got like three different um, websites, crunchymenopause.com, which is a weird title again, <laughs> where I just kind of help try to help women through menopause naturally and stuff. And of course, it's affiliate marketing and things like that that I sell. Um, and then I, I also sew. Um, I've got a website that's called catfitstitch.com and I, you know, I, I write tutorials and things like that and I'm currently working on a course my very first course which is kind of scary oh. <laughs> and um i've also got a website um for my writing uh called storytellercat.com and i just i write about writing i write about self-publishing which i am an indie author and yeah so that's that's what uh, i do for my work and uh, I've been married to my wonderful hus husband for 31 years and I've got three kids grown kids and four grandchildren so oh, wow. that's me in a nutshell <laughs> awesome well why don't you tell everybody how you found success with intermittent fasting like how much did you lose and how long did that take okay uh so i lost about 50 pounds and i've managed to keep it off i started that in 2014 um it was the five to fast actually that I started with. Uh, I, I don't know if a lot of people really even know what that is. Um, you hear so much about other kinds of fasts, like with the OMAD and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. not a lot about the five two anymore. But I think that that's really where things originated with Michael Mosley uh, mm -hmm. in the UK. And I joined, I joined a face group, uh, Facebook group, you know, that's where I first started hearing about this 5-2 fast. And, and I think most of my weight was lost with the 5-2 fast. And what that is, is you pick two days a week where you cut down your calories. Um, I would pick like Monday and Thursday where, you know, you're allowed, women are allowed like about 500 calories and men are allowed 600 calories. And I started off with that. And then I kind of gradually branched into a 16 8 where you know you skip breakfast i like to alternate things mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i did the 16 8 uh did the 20 for the warrior diet and uh gradually progressed to the omad diet which is one meal a day which i just love but i do you know like um i like to be versatile and stuff like that so i do long fasts here and there too and i call them my detox fasts <laughs> so uh, oh, very good yeah. And so, and so you've been maintaining for how long at this point? Well, since the beginning from 2014. So, okay. yeah. yeah. And, and so when you're maintaining, what, what does that look like for you? Uh, well, basically I just 
I get up, I eat nothing. <laughs> I, I just, it's kind of boring, but I mean, I eat nothing, but just drink water when I'm, you know, thirsty. I, I get ready for work. Um, I, I like to walk as well. And I started this little kind of walk to work program for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm about four miles away from my work. And it's quite a trek. <laughs> it's yeah. actually through like a heavy highway and industrial kind of area. It's not really fun to walk, but I love walking so much. And my problem was the time, you know, the time that it takes to to put the walking in that I like to do. And so I thought, hey, why don't I just go and walk to work? So <laughs> for four miles, I walk to work. Not every day. I, I hope to do more you know, th- since now that it's it's springtime and stuff like that. But um, if I can do it at least three or four times a week, then I do. Um, so I walk the four miles to work, get to work, uh, don't even think about food. Uh, I don't have lunch. Uh, I go out for a walk then again on my breaks and on uh, my lunch hours. And I, tr- I try to get in as much walking as I can. Then when I get home, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> and uh, so I make supper and that's what I have. So awesome. Now that you're in maintenance, do you, do you find that you do OMAD like every single day or do you mix it up a good bit with, you know, different kinds of intermittent fasting? I do it every single day, uh, but I like to throw in a 48 hour fast every Thursday usually. Um, some weeks I don't. It just depends on what happens. But for the most part, it's OMAD. Uh, it just nat- was a natural progression for me. And uh, I just really love that simplicity of life, not having to worry about what do I have for breakfast? What do I have for lunch? And all that. You know, it's just the one meal. And yeah. So. Very good. What about a, a little bit of backstory on your weight? Like, has it always been a challenge for you? Or was this something that just happened later in life? No, I never actually never struggled with my weight my entire mm. life. It was menopause. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, it was menopause. I mean, when as a woman, you think, hey, I got everything together, whatever. And, and you know, my weight's fine. Uh, and then boom, I mean, I, I went through menopause early. So like 47, I was, you know, done and, and into postmenopause. I was shocked how it it affected my body it was like oh my goodness I mean all of a sudden I'm getting weight around the middle I never had that around my rib cage or anything like that before my belly and it's like what is happening to me this is crazy so I knew I had to do something and uh I kind of stumbled on uh this uh intermittent fasting I never ever thought it would work (laughs) I didn't tell anybody what I was doing and then you know all of a sudden they're like noticing hey Kathy you know you look different are you doing something are you dieting or something like you just have a little different of eating plan and you know I didn't really elaborate too much because those that I did elaborate with you know close to me were like what are you doing to yourself <laughs> but right. yeah i mean it was it was it was really shocking when you go your your whole life and you you never really struggled with the weight and all of a sudden something's happening because your hormones are out of whack your metabolism's different everything that you think that you know everything people are doing now women are doing now it completely flips when you go into menopause <laughs> Right. and doesn't work anymore you know so right. yeah when you decided to lose weight what was that was there a moment where you just said okay I've got I've got to do something or was there like an I've had enough of this moment or or was it something you kind of came to gradually oh no no it was a shocker <laughs> <laughs> it was like okay so I, I think I remember it was my niece's graduation right and it's always in pictures we don't perceive ourselves the same you know in everyday life until we actually see a picture and oh my goodness it was like okay at the same time my daughter was pregnant and expecting our first grandchild and Uh, I go back and I see this picture and I thought which which one is pregnant (laughs) which which one is pregnant (laughs) because 
I looked big and I was so shocked. And I thought, oh my goodness, I got to do something, you know? And, and the funny thing is, before I even saw this picture, I would ask everybody, you know, my friends close to me, do I look fat? And they all lied to me, Kayla. <laughs> they all lied to me, every single one of them. And I was just, I, I was so mad. You know, when I seen the picture, it's like, come on, you guys are lied. But I know they were just trying to save my feelings. Right. But then I thought, okay, <clears throat> Kathy, you got to do something, you know? Like, so I, I started listening to inspirational, um, motivational speakers on YouTube. My, one of my favorites, Tony. Tony Robbins. Oh, and, I love him. oh, I love him. And, you know, I remember one of his quotes. Um, I was sitting in my office, this office, <laughs> and my husband had purchased me a uh, one of those pedal bikes because I said, I got to do something. Can you just get me a, like a pedal bike or whatever? And so here I was on my pedal bike, biking in the office, listening to Tony Robbins. And he goes, get back to your fighting weight. And immediately, I'm bawling, immediately, crying my eyes. I'm like, I'm trying, nothing's helping. And, you know, I, I took a little, I wrote out the coat, and I stuck it onto my bike. And every day, I went in there thinking, I'll be motivated. I'll keep on biking, and then I'll really lose weight. Nothing happened. Nothing. Mm -hmm. It didn't, it seemed like the more I went out and tried to, exercise like I joined the gym I, I I you know my husband and I we went faithfully every you know other day or so it did nothing for my weight and I'm like what's going on am I going to be like this forever I remember crying with my sister on the phone like am I gonna look this big forever you know <laughs> it was, it was tra traumatizing it really right. was right. and and so then I thought okay yeah no, I got to do some research. I love research. <laughs> Google's my right. friend. <laughs> right. And so I found this five too fast. And I found so many success stories from people that, you know, not those gym rats, not, not the ones that you see are out at the gym every day. These were just normal people that, you know, maybe even struggled with some physical ailment or something that they couldn't go out and do the exercise. Well, right. these people were successfully losing weight and keeping it off. And I, I, I just looked at the pictures and I read the stories and I thought, that's what I want, you know? <laughs> so then I just started secretly and <laughs> no, didn't tell nobody. And I, the weight just, I was shocked. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't right away. It was like maybe a couple of months after that. It takes some time. I mean, you can't just do it for a short period of time and think, well, I don't see any results, but because I wasn't expecting those results, it, it just, you know, all of a sudden, oh, my mm -hmm. pants are loose or, you know, or uh, my face is looking thinner, things like that. And then I thought, hey, this is something. This is something, you know, and, and it wasn't just even the weight. It was like how I was feeling and I had more energy and I, feel, I felt like, like less stress and all that. So I just kept on doing that, you know. Right. So what do you think was the, the biggest challenge for you along the way? Uh, biggest challenge along the way? Or now. Yeah, yeah. Well, even, okay, say, I'll say right now, right? It's that question of when is enough enough? You mm -hmm. know, like when to start the maintenance? Am I good enough? I mean, because we all have, anyone who's lost any amount of weight, the question is always in my mind, do I look good enough? I mean, I know that's vain, but it's like, is my stomach flat enough? Um, <laughs> right. You know, is my face, do I still have the jowls? Do I have, you know, this and this and that, you know? It's like, right. when, when is enough enough? When do you start into the maintenance? And I mean, that was challenging for me because I used to, you know, step on that scale every day. I used to count, you know, count the calories, um, you know, keep track of the numbers. And I mean, not, not that there's anything wrong with that for those who do want to do that. But for me, I felt like, you know, when do I stop that and just be normal, you know? Right. And, and one of the, one of the things that kind of kicked me into a different mental kind of mind frame was losing my mother. I lost my mother about a year ago. 
and she she would always kind of complain oh my belly's so big and we'd go shopping and stuff and she'd buy the large and I said mom you're not that big but you know you think you're bigger than you are and stuff so we all think that Mm -hmm. and you know and then and she passed away and after the fact it was like was that all really important you know the five pounds the the Mm -hmm. oh it's three extra today or oh you know Mm -hmm. that what really important and so the, that really kind of kicked me into a different mind frame so now I never step on the scale mm-hmm. and I I mean I know my clothes fit and I know how I feel and I just continue on with the maintenance and your body will kind of level out to what it's comfortable with mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and kind of sometimes I think as an intermittent faster you you don't give your body that kind of permission to just be okay where you're at you know and in fact in fact I think like before my mother passed away it was like yeah I had lost a lot of weight and I was almost looking too gaunt you know what I mean sometimes Mm -hmm. you can over intermittent fast and and so I had to reevaluate myself and say you know what yes I did gain a little bit back after Mm -hmm. my mom because I got kind of kicked off of my regular thing, you know, going through trauma, life happens, things Mm -hmm. happen, you know, people pass away, hardships happen in your life. And, and you have to kind of, when you do a program like intermittent fasting, you have to be able to be flexible enough to allow certain things in your life to happen. And with Mm -hmm. that little extra, I I looked at myself and said, you know what, it's fine. I'm not Mm -hmm. even going to worry about it. And as soon as I kind of let go of all those numbers and, uh, you know, obsessiveness over it, it was like, I feel like I'm not even on any kind of plan. I'm just eating a different way. And it's just kind of my way of life. And I love it. So that is so good. Um, so what is one piece of advice you would give to somebody else out there on their weight loss journey? Uh, maybe, maybe they're kind of like just starting out. What would you say to them? I would say start slowly. Mm. I've seen people just all of a sudden, boom, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it all right away. And then doesn't always work out. It's almost like an overload. You have Mm. to kind of give yourself time to experiment, you know, check it out, see what it's all about. Do the research, Uh, you know, like try just skipping breakfast, do it for a little while and see how you feel. You know, you might really be surprised that you know, hey, this is something I really like, or really, you know, helps me, you know, with my health and and my weight all at once. And yeah, I would say start slow. Um, Also, do not listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to anybody. Because I've run into so many that say, you're harming yourself. Oh, you know, I've done the research, and that's not healthy. Or right. are you an are you anorexic? No, <laughs> you know it's like right. so. Don't don't listen to the naysayers. Just experiment. You know, try different things and see what works. I mean, one thing what works for one person may not work for another, and that's fine. You know, right. so yeah, I would say that those those are the two things. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So, um, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I that you really wish I would have? Uh, let's see. <laughs> what do I eat? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I eat whatever I want. I'm well, sorry I to, to say this. <laughs> Some people think, oh, what? No, that's not right. It's right <laughs> for me. I eat whatever I want. You know what? I don't want to live my life where I'm restic- restricting this and restricting that. I just don't think that that's sustainable, you know? So many other diets like keto and, you know, others that other people, you know, think are so great. I mean, maybe they are. And yes, you can lose weight on them. And I'm not dissing them or anything like that. Those are fine if you want to do that. But for me, I just know that if you tell me I can't have a chocolate bar or an ice cream or whatever, eventually down the road, I'm going to have that and I'm going to oh, fall yeah. off the wagon. So why, why set your up, set yourself up for failure like that? So, and, and especially, I mean, if, if I'm out 
with my grandchildren and it's a hot day and they want ice cream, I'm going to go for ice cream with them. I, I'm not going to say, no, Nana can't have that because I'm not going to do that. I, I want to go out and have the pizza with my husband or ice cream cone or, you know, some little treat like that. And so I just eat whatever I want. <laughs> I, I'm the same exact way, so I, oh, I, great. I'm on the same page there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Kathleen, thank you so much uh, for being here and for sharing your story. I think we have very much the same philosophies. If anybody would like to get into contact with you, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, let's see. Probably my Amazon author page. Okay. Um, also, my my website is crunchymenopause.com, <laughs> catfitstitch.com, or storytellercat.com. And I also have YouTube channels for all three of them. I just don't have anything on my uh, Storyteller Cat yet. I'm still working on that. Okay. Um, also, on Facebook, I've got a Facebook group. It's called Menopause Maggie. It's a closed group, but we discuss all kinds of kind of natural remedies and things like that for menopause and... Uh, um yeah and intermittent fasting things like that so yeah so that's how <laughs> awesome well thank you again so much for being here kathleen i appreciate it you're welcome <laughs>